In this video, we take a look at the logic associated with half and full adders. So having watched our previous videos, you'll already be familiar with how to perform basic binary addition. Let's run through a quick example to refresh your memory. We're going to add together the deanery integers 43 and 107 as two 8-bit binary numbers. So we have a 1 and a 1 is a 0k a 1. A 1, 1 and a carry 1 is 1k the 1. A 0, 0 and a carry 1 is 1. Obviously carrying 0. 1 and 1 is 0k the 1. 0, 0 and the carry 1 is 1 with nothing to carry. 1 and 1 is 0k a 1. 0, 1 and the carry 1 is 0k a 1. And finally, 0, 0 and the carry 1 is 1. This gives us the answer 150 if we convert it back to deanery. So we'll now look at the actual logic gate circuitry that allows this binary addition to take place. So let's start by considering what combination of logic gates we would need to perform the addition of any single pair of bits. We need two inputs. We'll label those A and B. We have produced a sum as one of our outputs, so we'll label this digit. And we've also produced a carry bit to feed in to the subsequent addition. So we're going to label this C out. This truth table covers all the possible combinations for inputs A and B alongside its two possible output columns, digit and C out. So let's consider the first of the two outputs, digit. We can see that this is the truth table for an exclusive OR gate, an XOR. We can see that the output is 1 if only one of the inputs is 1. In all other situations, the output is 0. Now let's consider the second of the two outputs, C out. We can see this is the truth table for an AND gate. We can see that the output is 1 if both the inputs are 1. In all other situations, the output is 0. The logic gate circuit we have created is known as a half adder circuit. A half adder is a building block of the complete circuit required to perform the original calculation that we want to solve. However, if we take another look at the original calculation, we can see a half adder is not the full picture. We also need the ability to accept a third input. Now that's the carry bit from the previous addition. Let's call it C in. Now that we have three inputs, A, B and C in, and two outputs, digit and C out, we've ended up with this truth table. We now have an additional input to account for any carry bit from the previous edition, the output of the current edition, and the output of a carry bit from the current edition if one is generated. Here is the logic gate circuit based on the new truth table. It combines two half adders with the addition of an OR gate, and this is known as a full adder. Let's make sure you fully understand how this circuit works. To add A, B and C in together, we first need to start by using the first half adder to add A and B together. This gives us a partial result, which we've labelled X. We then use the second half adder to add the partial result X to any carry in to give us the output digit. Finally, one or both of the half adders may have generated a carry bit, and if so, this needs to be fed into the next calculation. Finally, we can simplify this full adder circuit down to an abstracted box diagram as shown here with our inputs in red and our outputs in orange.
Finally, we can connect multiple four adders together as shown here. When connected like this, N full adders can input the carry bit into a subsequent adder along with two brand new inputs to add a binary number of N bits together. This process allows us to perform the multi-bit binary addition we were looking at initially. And this is known as a ripple carry adder, though you don't need to know that term for the exam. So this is an incredibly useful circuit. Although the designs have been highly refined over the years, it still represents the basics of the logic that actually take place inside the arithmetic logic unit of a computer processor. And here we can see how a string of one bit full adders can be used to perform the original binary calculation we presented at the start of this video. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. What does a simple ALU circuit look like and how does it actually work?